Excalibur is the tallest, fastest, and longest roller coaster in the state of Maine. This Custom Coasters International creation is the signature attraction of Funtown USA, and it is a very underrated roller coaster. This ride has a lot of similarities to another award-winning CCI in Holiday World's Raven. Both coasters have excellent settings in the woods, some powerful drops, and great laterals. And after the retracking that Excalibur received last off-season, it is running better than it has in almost two decades. So in this video, I will review Excalibur and explain why this coaster should get more attention. Maine is not a particularly strong state for roller coasters. Palace Playland had some wood coasters in the early 20th century, but by the mid-1990s, the only coasters in Maine were portable clones. That all changed in 1998 when Funtown USA built Excalibur. Custom Coasters International was the foremost wood coaster designer in the 1990s. CCI built a reputation for delivering awesome layouts for low prices. This made them an attractive option for a small park like Funtown. But there was one downside to CCI, their maintenance. While the coasters started smooth, the company was known for using cheap materials. This, combined with their often aggressive layouts, led to many of their coasters getting rough over time, and Excalibur was no different. The ride was quite smooth when I first rode it in 2002, but it gradually got rougher over the next decade. Excalibur was never a ride that was rough start to finish. Rather, there would be specific sections of the ride that would really shake you up. In 2019, that section was the third hill that runs underneath the lift hill. That element was brutal. Fortunately, this was the section that Funtown retracted during the 2019-2020 offseason, and the coaster ran better than it has in the past two decades. The only slightly rough patch now is at the base of the first drop, but was far milder than the rough patches you'd find on this coaster in past years. Beyond the superior comfort, Excalibur also seemed to run a little faster because the ride was tracking more cleanly. Hopefully Excalibur keeps running like this going forwards. Excalibur stands 100 feet or 30 meters tall, reaches speeds of 55 miles per hour or 89 kilometers per hour, and traverses 2,700 feet or 820 meters of track. And the coaster's presentation is great. The ride's lift hill runs alongside Funtown's parking lot, which builds anticipation for guests as they arrive. And honestly, that really is your best vantage point of Excalibur. Very little of the coaster can be seen from the midway, as it goes out into the woods. This setting is one of the strongest aspects about Excalibur. The proximity to the trees enhances the speed by day, and by night, much of the layout is pitch black. This is one of my favorite night rides. But beyond the ride, Funtown built a themed area around Excalibur. As the name suggests, Excalibur is lightly themed to King Arthur's legendary sword. The coaster is the lone ride in the Camelot area. There isn't Disney levels of theming, but it's a step up from what you'd expect at a family park like this. And it culminates in the coaster station, which is a fanciful castle. It looks good from the outside, and the interior features some little touches like draw gates, shields, a knight, and Merlin. Typically, you will not have to wait long for Excalibur. While the park only has one 24-passenger PTC train for Excalibur, it's usually just a one or two train wait most days and that can even be the case on weekends. The longest line I've ever encountered for this coaster was a 20 to 30 minute wait, and that was on a random Monday this past year. Excalibur's queue line is split into three separate lines. You have separate lines for the very front and very back seats, and then a third row that's for every other seat. On those days when the park is busy, all three lines tend to fill evenly, so I do not recommend waiting for the very front or back when that happens, you can instead get the second row or second to back in a fraction of the time and get a near identical ride experience. On most days though, the very front or very back is only an extra one or two train weight. On those days, it's worth it. I like the front and back cars evenly on Excalibur because they both have their standout elements. In 2021, Excalibur ran fairly smoothly, but in other years, wheel seats or the back of a car would be noticeably shakier so just keep that in mind if the ride gets some rough patches again in the future. This is also why I recommend holding onto your restraint once checked by the employee. Otherwise, the lap bars on these PTC trains can lower during the ride's valleys. 
Excalibur begins with a slow straightaway out of the station, and then it dips downwards. You then quickly round a sharp, unbanked turn that leads in the lift hill. And do not be fooled, this turn actually gives some laterals, and it's just the appetizer for what's to come. As you ascend up the lift hill, it is impossible to miss the sign at the top. Per the king's orders, guests are told not to stand up. And that's one of a few awesome signs around Excalibur. My favorite though is the sign on the fence surrounding the attraction. Rather than saying no trespassing like most parks, the sign says, is there life after death? Jump this fence and find out. It is a seemingly unthinkable sign to see in an amusement park in America in 2021, but I find it pretty funny. But back to Excalibur. Once atop the lift, you turn slightly to the left and then descend down an 82 foot or 25 meter tall drop. This is one of the steeper drops you'll find on a traditional wooden coaster, and it's great too. The drop plunges into the woods, and the back cars offer great floater airtime the entire way down. The pullout is currently the one shaky spot in the ride, and it's also where the on ride photo occurs, so the reactions this past year were priceless. That's followed by a sizable turnaround. The entrance into this element gives a powerful pop of ejector airtime up front. Then, like many CCI turnarounds, it dips down and up, so it delivers great sustained laterals throughout the turn. And if you're up front, those laterals are extra sweet, because they start while you're still levitating out of your seat, so you're violently thrown to the side. Then the drop off the turnaround gives good floater airtime for those in the back. You then zip around the third hill, which gradually turns to the right as it passes underneath the lift hill. In the past, this element was riddled with jackhammering, but in 2021, the element finally rode smoothly for the first time in a long time. It also ran faster. The minimal banking resulted in some strong and sustained laterals, and the resultant drop even gave some weak floater airtime in the back. I never remember the laterals being this strong in my prior two decades riding Excalibur, and that airtime moment definitely didn't exist. So this is some of the best evidence that the retracking worked wonders. That's followed by speed hill. This element delivers strong floater airtime throughout the train, but the hill is a little stronger in the front car. You then zoom around another awesome turnaround. Those up front get another strong pop of ejector airtime into the turn. The entrance in this turnaround is so sharp that even those in the back will get some weak floater airtime. You then get some more strong and sustained laterals because this turn also dips down and up. It really was a CCI signature move. The exit to this turnaround starts by gradually banking to the left, which produces some decent laterals. But they're especially good in the back because you're pulled down the drop. And once the drop straightens out, those in the back will get a weak pop of airtime too. You then rise up a sizable hill, which offers weak floater airtime for those up front. And this is the last airtime moment on the ride. But Excalibur compensates by dialing up the laterals even further. The next drop is almost entirely unbanked, and it curves towards the ground, which forcefully pins riders to the side of the train. Excalibur then rises up into a 270 degree helix. This element looks awkwardly tall and rather slow off-ride, but the helix's compactness and lack of banking deliver some of the best laterals of any coaster. They are super strong and very sustained. Excalibur then dips down and up. I do wish this drop offered airtime. Really it's the only element on this ride I would change. Instead this drop only offers two great head choppers. Excalibur then rips around one last turn, delivering another strong burst of laterals before slamming to a stop on the brakes. So what would I rate Excalibur? I would give this CCI an 8 out of 10. This is a very good wooden roller coaster. It does a little bit of everything. It has a top-notch setting in the woods. It has good pacing as every element delivers airtime, laterals, or both simultaneously. And those laterals are among the best of any coaster. Every single turn will slam you to the side of the train. And thanks to the recent track work, Excalibur is running smoother and faster than it has in a very long time. My 2021 rides may have been worthy of an 8.5 or a 9, but I went with an 8 to take into consideration my past rides as well, because this ride will tend to get rough over time. Hopefully, Funtown can keep this coaster running like it did in 2021, because Excalibur fell completely out of control, offered a little bit of everything, 
and maintained its comfort. So those are my thoughts about Excalibur at Funtown USA. What are your thoughts on Maine's only wooden roller coaster? Have you ridden this ride? I would love to hear your thoughts about Excalibur down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.